Yo, 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 welcome back to another Beaumont Weekly. Currently, I'm in a seven bed HMO doing some maintenance work. I had to redeco this wall, boring, boring. But this week, I'm not only doing maintenance, we also are with the BBC, because Homes Under the Hammer are doing a little documentary series on a new property we've just brought. It's not a shit hole, so it'd be quite fun to go through that. We'll meet with a social housing provider about a specific kind of leasing contract that we may take on. And we bought loads of new equipment recently to do more design stuff. So stay tuned to this video. Enjoy yourself, live your best life, goodbye. Here we are with a big man, gonna pick up some more paint supplies because we need some caulking and some fire foam, so let's fucking go. <laughs> you need some paper. Alright, so we're gonna take the fat off with that there. We'll be back with that. We'll get nice and smooth for this one. So What's that? Think rips, huh? Which for? The door. You're gonna have to fill in that door, you know, you're gonna rub it back, then you're gonna use a high grit, get it smooth, then okay. Beautiful. Look, we'll learn about maintenance here. So why am I in here doing maintenance? Well, the reason is, when you run a construction business, it's pretty brutal. And we've got a lot of projects on at the moment and we want to close out a load of them before Christmas. We've got about 12 active sites, seven of them of which we want to finish and kill off before the 25th of December. Now we've got all these sites to finish, we've got all these lads that are really productive on all these sites, but we have a wave of the flu that's wiped out quite a few of our gangs, which means we're strapping for lads. So we need our lads productive and we've got a few different maintenance tasks and snagging bits that need to be done on projects that are finishing. So a few of us are just mucking in and cracking on with what we can. And this one was an easy one for me. We basically had to add another acoustic board here to meet the um, sound test because they screwed us by two decibels. The reason we failed the sound test by two decibels is because the wall we're testing on has two doors like leading into each other. So of course, it's gonna like the sound is gonna travel through. And building control were actually quite sympathetic about this, but either way, we had to pay to put another fucking soundboard on, re uh, tape and join it. And then I'm here just redecorating it, doing the corking work, cutting it in, and I had to fix in and do some expansion foam and some of the sills downstairs that were drafting. There's a few other bits that just need to be done, but we muck in, we get shit done just because we want to finish these jobs come Christmas. We don't want these lagging into the new year because that can happen a lot. A job just lags and lingers in the background. So we just want these killed off, done and fully let. We've got four tenants in here already and then three more rooms to go. And obviously these two rooms we couldn't let yet because of the acoustic wall issue. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Sometimes you've got to roll your sleeves up and do shit. And um, this is not productive for me. I don't want to be doing these tasks, but it's better that we just try and keep our programs nice and on track because we're a couple of weeks leading up to Christmas. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yo, yo, yo. So here we are today. We are a new property we just bought, which is an absolute shithole. And we're going to be converting it to a six bed HMO. And we bought this at auction, paid a bit more than we wanted for it, but we like the location, it's close to the town centre, all that fun stuff. But the BBC picked it up because they were searching through the auction to see who they could do another piece on. And we spoke with the BBC and they've come down and they're here today um, to shoot Homes Under the Hammer on this property, which would be quite fun. Uh, so me and dad are gonna be on camera with them doing some bits and bobs. So me and Sonny before have done loads of work with the BBC back in our boy band days at their live studios doing like all sorts of kids programs and performances and stuff like that. I was actually dressed as a Stig once, the Stig from Top Gear, driving around a BBC studio set in a go-kart. We've got history with the BBC, but this, this will be cool. Um, I don't know exactly what we're doing, but they've been here since this morning getting all their B-roll shots of the property and we're gonna do our narrative piece now. So see what happens. Gonna be famous. Just plug the YouTube channel. We plug, plug, plug. Yeah, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Ryan. Ryan, yes, it is, yes. Ryan. Hello, mate. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Ryan. Cool. Nice to meet you, mate. Hello. Ryan. Nice. I'll move up to it. Pleasure to see you, I'll let you clip that, mate. Sorry. If you stand next to each other, yeah. next to each other, so if you come forward here a bit. Um, so you, you're talking to Martel there, yeah. that's it. Got you. Trying to do a travel program. It feels a bit yeah. odd, yeah. we stay quite close to me. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It always looks like yeah, everybody's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On telly. This is nice, because Ryan's the, the leader of this. It's like Ryan's the focal point, so I usually stay off camera. Now you're getting dead. <laughs> this bit's all about you. It's about you having fun, relaxing. Have you seen the show before? Yes. yes. Having fun? Yeah, loads of fun. How are you doing? You having fun? Yeah, it does feel a bit familiar, this. These big Sonys, mate. I love talking to a father and son duo who are working together in, you know, family business. Good luck. Thank you very much. And thank you. We'll be delighted to invite you back on a warmer day. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> What's that, sorry? Are you going to separate it up or just have one house? Uh, we're not sure yet. 
I'm not sure. I'm not going to the HMO again. Is that what it was before? Yeah. It was uh, social housing or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was now with trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always is with social housing. Put an arsonist in the front room. Have a guess what he did. Burn it down! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, we could skip and hold hands. Ready? One more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all sound? You're all good. Sweet. Um, that's your done. Nice, mate. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah, that's us done here with the BBC. So they'll be back probably May of next year, something like that, to come film the finished article. And then uh, we're done. And it was great to speak to Ian as well, a local resident, who gave us a lot of insights to the history of both of these properties. Quite interesting. It's always good to speak to locals, because locals just give you knowledge that you just can't get online. They'll tell you all the things that happen on this street, the quality of this street, the kind of people here, what the local residents want, what they don't want. So yeah, nice to speak to the locals. Good to wrap up with the BBC. And then soon we're going to meet Speaking of social housing, going to meet social housing provider at some other properties to talk about a specific kind of lease that we're going to get on some of our HMOs that are just about to finish. See you there. We've made some changes. We've gotten ourselves one of these. Yeah, so this is a giraffe camera, as you can see here, little giraffe. This is the gizmo that goes on top of the tripod. You plonk it in like that, and then it just sort of like rotates around and takes full measures of properties and surveys and 360 panoramic shots. So we can now, rather than go into a property, pen and paper, laser measure, and go to each wall and get a dim that way, get a dim that way, write it down, account for some of the awkward shapes in some properties where the house is on a bit of a piss or something like that. Create those plans and then we take them into SketchUp, then convert that into a CAD file for layout. And then we create our floor plans and then we have a walkthrough video to go through. So that's what we currently do, and it takes quite a bit of time. So you take it into a room like this, plonk it in, and it takes a full scan, and it gets a 360 panoramic visual. So you then have like a 3D walkthrough of the property that you can go through afterwards, which looks like this. So here's one we've done on a dance studio that we've just bought. And then there you go, I'm in one of the rooms. And then you can go into like the back room go into there. So it gives me all this context. I might as well be in the property. Like I can see everything. Uh, and you can just go through the whole property like that. You can go up the floors, down the floors. We've even got some stuff outside as well. But then we also have the files for the, the floor plans, which are to measure. So it's showing us the only, the only annoying thing is it has to, it has to predict wall thicknesses. So um, that's a bit annoying, but it catches it on the point cloud file, which is this file here. So that there is the point cloud file, E57, that's compatible with SketchUp, with Revit files. So an architect can take that and create a full 3D massing of the building just off that file. And I'll show you what one of those files sort of looks like. All right, so you can see there, see all those tiny little microscopic dots? Those are all of the, that's all information. That's the LiDAR picking up thousands and thousands and thousands of data points throughout the whole property. And it's creating what you can see is roughly the shape of the property. And that's the shape of that ground floor out to the back, the stair core there, roughly you can see that ground floor entrance, dance studio to the back. But that can be taken into a Revit file and essentially compressed into a 3D model. And then the architect can take that and create everything from that basically. It's making our sur surveying of these properties much more diligent, uh, which means we just have all the information we need when we do the survey and can then create these proposed plans armed with the video walkthrough, the 360 panoramic walkthrough, the E57 cloud file and the 2D floor plans. And then from that, we can create our proposed plans, which for HMOs is perfectly adequate. On this dance studio, bigger scheme, we want to get 11 service departments out of this one. And I've actually done some plans for it. I've created the floor plans already, the proposed floor plans, which look a bit like this. These are high level at the moment. It's purely just for us to get an idea of what can we actually fit in the building. And these are to measure as well. So these are the measurements of the units. So you see we've got a ground floor there, with some studios at the back, studios and a two bed up there and two one beds and two bed up there. And with this proposal comes quite a significant extension, which I think is feasible. And I created this 3D module out of it so that we can um, start to visualize what the building may look like. You can see from the front, we could do a bit of landscaping. 
Uh, we get some parking in there on the side as well. Pretty considerable extension at the back to go up two stories and get the dormers on. The existing vendor actually had planning to get a second story extension done already. It elapsed, but we know that there's a precedent for us to get the extension. It's just, can we get the extra level? I've then done a bit of a contextual massing as well to show adjacent properties. So this is like a quick fit light industrial to the side, uh, some light industrial around the back, and then these are apartments above and commercial below. And the main reason for this is to see how in keeping is our extension, our proposed extension and the massing, this is the sheer size of it, in conjunction with the existing properties around this building. I don't think there's gonna be any pushback from quick fit or the light industrial at all, because it's C1 use class, it is commercial use class as well. C3, maybe they'd have a bit more of an issue looking over industrial, like again, I don't really think so in that sense, but there is, this little extension at the back of the neighboring property and they do have resi windows here but the sun path when you look at a sundial goes around the back of this building so we're not going to be obstructing their daylight however it will get somewhat darker in there but there's currently a um an existing pitch that goes quite high anyway on the current roof so I, th I think that's going to be our only major issue with this proposal with the extension is just because of the impact on this neighboring property but I mean, there's plenty of examples throughout the town and throughout cities all over the place where you have this sort of build up. So I don't think we're gonna have an issue, but at least I've got a bit more context here before we take this through to a pre-app. Um, and you can see it with the neighboring properties here as well. Um, and they've got this big front extension, which I think is ugly as fuck. Anyway, very cool project. It's, yeah, 11 service departments. Obviously we need to go through the full scope of planning and all that stuff. Um, but we have right opposite that building is our Northgate site or the Beaumonts, which we've got 14 service departments in. And we had hardly any pushback from planners on that. It's running really well. And we can take those services and all the things that we've built on, the, on top of that with this service, with the management systems and the cleaning systems. And because we're right opposite the street, we can integrate those same systems, which is great. Rather than it being in another town or something, we can scale out a nicer service accommodation business within this town. And then as we establish more more of a foothold uh, and understand more and more about how to run that kind of business then we can open up that management service to more and more clients and external clients as well as just our own properties so very excited about that very excited about this game changer sammy and sean already know exactly how to use this they're my little brothers 16 years old they could probably already use it better than me i just need to teach them a little bit more about the dashboard stuff and then literally the other day they just i wasn't i wasn't here i was in london they took this to a new property we just bought did the full survey created all the floor plans and sean was sat here a minute ago creating the proposals and then i'll come back to him double check the proposed plans mostly all i'm really looking at is just cost effective design because that's where they need that bit more knowledge and understanding if you move certain walls or do certain things with the layouts and the waste runs and the m e and just a bit with regulations as well once they've understood all that stuff which they're close to being able to do they can just run away and just do designs and they're 16 which is Pretty impressive. So for anyone out there who's wanting to do HMOs or do their own designs, it's fully, fully within your capabilities to do. You just got to put the time in and learn how to use them. Hardware like this makes that life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, that's our draft camera. That's our surface accommodation building. That's Robbie. Because you know, Phil Walcott played at the World Cup when he was 16. That is mad, you know. That's fucking nuts. So so here we are. We are at one of our six bed HMO conversions and we're meeting with a housing provider because, well, we're meeting with their surveyor, the inspector, because basically there's MOD contracts, which we've been approached by a housing provider who want to take on some of our HMOs. And we don't do any social housing ever. We, we like to keep everything on the private market, but this contract specifically, which I don't want to go to the specifics of, because I don't think the provider would like me doing that. Um, but it basically works out very well monetarily um, and also answers their needs. And also the covenant strength is very strong. So on the refinance, we won't have an issue. We've already appraised it with Together, the bank together. They're happy for the happy with the lease. So on that basis, we thought, you know what, let's have a look at the opportunity and see how it goes. We've been approached by a lot of providers before, but this specific contract with the MOD is nice. Uh, and obviously very strong covenants backed by the government and the MOD. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see what requirements they have. They need to come and inspect the properties so it meets their standards. We'll see how it goes. Do you need the app to do before you can start stuff? Yeah. But so, so as far as I understand it, you come around and inspect that the property is satisfactory for the use, the use case. Yeah, all I do is take photos, four photos each room. One having the electricity and the will it. This one does, yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. This was pretty much. This was all finished now. Yeah. She's a bit of a clean, is bit this of tidy. The HMO up. as well, like that. Yeah. So it's like it's it's on an app, and when it opens up, I've done that. It's gone green because I've done that one. Got you. But these um, pre-vet checks take ages to open. Is it? 
So from leaving that other one to come round here, it still hasn't opened. Is it? Yeah. But if I go on another one like we're doing inventory, mm. I'm just pressing it on. Yeah, so, you, so you basically need a photo of each bedroom, kitchen area and stuff, is it? Yeah. Nice. Like, yeah. This is an example of a bedroom. Yeah, so it's just what like the other one's gonna look like as well. Pretty much, yeah. Similarly. You're good doing HMOs like that, aren't you? Yeah, we've done about 30, something like that. I wouldn't fold my missus up here, who's also the boss. It's a birthday day, so I had Is it? Tread carefully, yeah. Hi, Joe. Right, this Happy birthday <laughs> to Do you want us to I'm guessing you don't want us in a room, right? You just want to bang for some photos about here. Yeah, sweet. Nice. So yeah, look what it looks like is there there's three properties we're looking to hand over. There's actually a few more, but they're not quite ready yet. And they're gonna use this one because it's finished as a benchmark for the standard we're gonna give so that they can pass on the ones that are just finishing construction and it means we can get we can move quicker into the leases, which is nice, because we don't have to do more inspections. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at our lovely six bed HMO. We mothballed this site like an absolute motherfucker. It's our own job and we just prioritised other things basically. So we've just been slowly chipping away at it. But it's not far now really. We're into last bits of the second fix, all the extensions up and stuff. And we will get it boxed off. But we just had more pressing sites to crack on with. This one's right next to the train station. Beautiful location. Not so sure about sticking a social housing contract on it, but Ultimately, I'm a capitalist and I believe in free market and the free market has come to us and offered us more money. I have a bit of a skewed perspective on this, yeah. We don't, I don't really like doing social housing stuff because I want to do, want to put all our efforts into giving to the private sector, like giving more housing for the private market, right? That's my like moral justification for doing what we do because uh, it does have a massive impact. And in the future, I'd love to have a greater impact with more capital to be able to do quite radical schemes which would be great for the private market reason being is because the kind of tenants that are going to move into this on this social housing contract are foreigners and they do have a right to live and work here um, they will be coming in and being paid by the government to live here for free and we have a huge waiting list of british citizens still waiting for housing those british citizens pay their taxes which is to the government and then the government pays for foreigners to live in these houses ahead of the queue. <clears throat> just a weird world we live in, man. And there's so many fucked up things going on in our society, which I bitch and complain about all the time. Tune into our podcast soon and you'll get to hear all about these ideas. Um, <clears throat> but I can't, just can't help thinking there's something wrong with that, inherently wrong. If you think about us, you know, as a society, as a people, as a country, is this the right way to do things? <clears throat> I don't know. But again, free market capitalists, I'm an opportunist. If they're willing to pay a lot more money for it and it's a lot less headache and it diversifies our portfolio, then I'm going to do that and I'll happily admit that. But it doesn't mean I'm happy about the underlying precedent that it sets. Why can you make more money doing this? Is that right? Taxpayer being the people waiting for housing like this paying for the people who could jump the queue and come ahead because politically it looks good for our politicians. How's the foreigners? They get more votes. They get votes from that public, that same public sector, the same citizens who are waiting for the housing. They don't know they're being used by pawns by the politicians. And this is the fallout of bad policy, bad leadership. It means we end up with a really skewed, twisted, weird, housing crisis and prioritizing of housing homeowner. yeah got a letter for you dear homeowner are you contemplating selling your home no that's no good to you but yes i am <laughs> see where this goes we buy things regardless of their condition oh, wow no obligation cash offer no obligation no estate agent or legal fees well, that'll make our lawyers a bit upset wouldn't it they heard about that. Amazing. No delays either. No delays. Sweet. Should we call them now? Yeah. Should we call them now? Yeah. Get your phone out. Uh, <laughs> I don't get how you get to choose which one. That's the point. The point. Which Lee's one's house. Lee, which one's George? George is fine. But anyway, thanks Lee and George. <laughs> we'll duly consider your offer. We don't sell our properties. <laughs> Selling is quitting. Oh. Selling is quitting. We never quit. <laughs> Go on, give me up. Thank you. Can I tell a quick story about... Yeah, please. ...about the world? Yeah, go on. So, we met the council... I'm not outing them here, I hope, but we met them a year ago, over a year ago. And they said they'd already gone over budget. It was going to be more like 150 million. Oh, 
And they said that before they'd even put up the investing 100 million in your town. And yeah. And we know how budgets work. Since then, it's gone to 200 million. Yeah. But here's the thing, and I, I realise why it's clever, and maybe we should incorporate this. It says investing more than 100 million. So it's, it's scary when you think about endless, it. <laughs> an endless pot of could money. Could be 200 million, could be 800 million. And, it, and here's what's fucked as well. They word it, we're investing more than 100 million in your town, yeah? Your town, you're a citizen, you go, you do that for me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really, that's taxpayers' money. So what, the, what they should really say is, we've taken all this money from you, like fucking HMRC, who won't give us our VAT back. Fucking bosses. We're chasing them. We've been chasing them for months. They'll take your money all happily, but they'll struggle to give it back to you unless they're Darlington Council, where they go, we're going to put all this money into the town for you. In fact, they've taken it from you in the first place, and then they give it back to you and expect gratitude in return. Again, fucked up world we live in. People don't realise it. That's your money. Uh, they, you could get a new just, house. Um, just cut there. So, thank you. We want to say thank you to HMR. <laughs> <laughs> that money will come back. They, they just want to see every invoice ever. Every invoice. Well, we've had two VAT claims in, rightfully so. You get your VAT back. That's just how it works in construction. Clearly paid it. We clearly paid it. She gave them all the invoices, gave them everything they needed. Like fucking what are we like three, four months later, and they've still given us nothing but just questions, 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 questions. There was no questions asked when we had to pay them the VAT. <laughs> so why yeah. the fuck do they not reciprocate the same when we've clearly shown accounts and they just ask endless questions? And now they're trying to deduct things off it, and we're like, no, no, no. We've paid this money. You owe us the money back. It's just HMRC, hey, hey, fucking, they'll take the money off. We had bailiffs turn up at a property, at our accountants today, because of um, a business rates bill that we've already agreed with the council we're not paying because it's a derelict property. And that's all sorted, but the bailiff still shows up and goes, you're still not paying council tax. We go, no, it's not council tax, business rates, and we don't need to pay it because we've already agreed this with the VOA. And they'll put that spend and all that time and effort into scrutinising a small business like us and other small businesses around the country, scrutinising us, but then they'll give billions to the big corporates, to the utility companies, not levy fucking what they call taxes. Well, and Apple and Starbucks, they yeah. were set up in Ireland and things yeah. like that. So they can Siphon off billions, billions. Mm -hmm. And they don't chase them because they're too big to chase and they've got the best lawyers in the world. So let's just screw the little guy, like me and Robbie, or contractors or your small businesses. They fucking shops on the high streets. They pay something like... So ridiculous, like 50% of their revenue is just going to taxes, business rates, they've got employment taxes, they've got national insurance taxes, fucking tax, tax VAT, a lot of them can't claim back on the VAT, like, it's just fucking criminal, customers are paying for it, like... Look on tax. <sighs> and taxes. What it said about taxes, that it should just be one fee, not thousands of Taxtopia. things. Yeah. And um, Good book. Really good book. The problem with our system is it's just so convoluted and complex yeah. that, that they, a small business they, will struggle to they navigate use it. that to their advantage, and obviously the big corporates who, who can employ a lot of accountants, they use that to their advantage. And obviously there's a little bit of um, crossover mm. between who run the country politically and who actually, yeah. you know... The tax system is written by the elites so that the elites can benefit from it. And all the money that gets spent on the overheads of HMRC goes to chasing the little guys like us who can only just about fucking afford to run our business and then they screw us for more taxes. Anyway, we're done here. Say bye to Glenn. All good, Glenn, yeah? yeah, yeah. Happy yeah. days? Thank you very nice much. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice Still to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Glenn. Cheers, mate. See you later, mate. Cool, sweet. Right, we're done here. Social housing. Do your thing. Government, fuck you. HMRC. We're not paying you fuck all. That's a joke. We're always going to pay our taxes. Just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a bad thing, if, um, despite what Ryan just said, is it a bad thing if I want to be in the elite and have the system work for me? Do you want me to ask Roy? No, don't tell Roy. Have you seen this, the picture of the town? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Here I am. And that's it for this video. I've just got off the phone actually with an auction where we've got an offer in, really like the property. And we put in a pre-auction offer, the vendor wouldn't take it. And we were in at a much higher bid than the previous bidder. Um, 
but they wouldn't accept it, wanted to go to the floor. So we've removed our offer and it's now going to the floor about a week earlier than planned. So we get a strategic advantage on that. So hopefully pick up a property on Monday. Gang's all here. Come on in. Here we are, Roberto. Sammy's back, back from the south. Sean, not sure what he does. Did you? He scored. Go on, yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Go on. Yeah, anyway, we're going to crack on, live our best lives. Thanks for watching the video. You know, subscribe, do your thing. See you in the next video. All right, now we can outro the video properly. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>